Hello, my name is Poppy Jones Little and my practice is centred upon the notion of lumphood. I encountered this term when reading Theodore Scouts' account of Aristotle's theory of substratum. He states, the lumps give up their lumphood in order to become the statue. Curiously, the text provides no further insight into this idea. And so, over the past three or four years, I have been scouring various discourses and texts which also utilise the word lump. From Marx's Lump and Proletariat to Shakespeare's Richard III, from parenting books to biblical teachings, from oncology to ontology. A lump transcends disciplines. It ultimately refuses classification. Lumps are not the same as things or objects, nor can they be assimilated with hunks, shards or blobs. A lump occupies a space somewhere within latency or within excess, within the outer limits of our recognition. Often understood as an indiscriminate piece of matter, I have come to realise that the term acts as a placeholder, a word that is uttered when the right word cannot be recalled. Lump creeps in without clear intention to denote a non-thing, unstable, uncomfortable, teetering at the edges. I realised quite recently that lump tends to be without without recognisable form, without present purpose, without immediate function. When discussing museological practices, Susan Pierce states that thing, object, specimen, artefact, all share common ground in that they refer to selected lumps of the physical world to which cultural value has been ascribed. And so essentially, anything, anyone, anything and everything can be rendered as a lump, or lump-like, or lumpen, or lumpy in some regard. Lump, or lump, within the German language, has a really interesting history. The lumpenpack, the lumpig, the lumpen, all allude to refuge and scraps, that which is wretched or worthless. These thoughts fuel my making as the materials utilised are largely waste. Such decision was influenced by our current climate crisis and ecological emergency. This reinforced that it's important that I work with waste. It urged my practice to shift. It compelled me to consider how I might make without putting further strain on our environment. The world is already so full of stuff that I felt I need not make any more. And so I began to consider practices of unmaking or undoing, rendering or reductive ways of working. Recently, broken furniture has become quite prominent. The past function and purpose is often lost, the object deactivated, which opens up kind of a rift for my interaction to take place. I strip away appearances, exposing the essentially lumpen substances which lie within the objects. This began with lumping at the discretion of the conservator. I deconstructed part of the sofa on which my dog had died <laughs> and I bound it so tightly together in and of itself, just that part of the sofa, no external materials. When documenting this piece, I noticed little nuances, slippages, details that I wanted to draw the viewer's attention to, to kind of share my intrigue with the lump. And so since this point, I have once again been working with photography alongside the objects. I began working with an old telephone table, a piece that is already rendered lumpen as it fell into disuse with time. As time progressed, technology progressed and so you no longer needed a telephone table in your hallway. Due to this kind of pre-existing, evidently lump-like condition, I wanted my interaction with the material to be quite tentative, not overly obstructive or violent. And so I just lifted the table onto its side, I unscrewed one of the legs, 
and I replaced that leg with its image. The position of the leg as image is arbitrary, as it's not going to function as leg as object would. The piece was in progress, but now no longer is in progress, but rather in perpetual waiting within the studio, which conveniently reinforces the implications of lumphood and lump modality. Exploring modal properties further, I began to consider the different existence and persistence conditions of lump. I nailed a ripped and discoloured towel to a wall, photographed it and then entirely unthreaded it with my bare hands. The threads were then hung over the nail and positioned in dialogue with the original photo. This was also nailed up, the printer paper arranged kind of like bathroom tiles. The substance of the towel is exposed, a direct link to de lumpen or the rags. The piece considers impact, encouraging viewer intrigue in a more blatant way, playing with the viewer's initial perception of a material, playing with dialogue between object and image. Alongside that work, I have been working continuously with a Chesterfield leather chair which was found in the street. It was found with a sign that read Take me, I'm free, open bracket, leg needs fixing, close bracket. And I realised that not only did the leg need fixing but the leather was torn, mould was spreading throughout the cushioning, it smelt rotten. These chairs can be sold for a few grand if they're new and yet I'm devoting time to slowly take it apart, ridding it of the appearance of a chair and exposing the substance which is lumpen. I have been prizing out staples, tacks, nails. This process is taking serious time as I want my unmaking or undoing to give justice to the past making, to provide the same level of care and attention as you would when making a chair. This is a work in progress. I am unsure exactly what form this chair may take, nor how many lumps its current appearance is composed of, but perhaps I will place it on the floor. Not buoyant, not lifted up, perhaps teetering on an edge of itself, balancing in cooperation with its parts. Perhaps it will be strung up or nailed down, perhaps I will attach to the lump an image of itself. A replacement of a cushion or leg that no longer is, a document of a past appearance or experience, as I did with the telephone table. An image would also work to foreground a detail that might still be visible within the lump or perhaps not. An image would provide a visual aid that is not so detached from the lump but a replica of like a, a flat reproduction of an extension, a drawing out of. Alongside these works, I have been editing found texts. Every lump stems from research, a reading or a compilation of readings, articles, parables, novels, essays, poems and papers. I have recently been considering how such readings may become a work or a lump within themselves. My reading of each text varies, largely just browsing, drawn to how lump occurs or how lump is situated. I lift the page that contains lump, seizing, kind of pilfering, claiming it, recontextualizing, isolating, and then reappropriating, reimagining. I read around lump, and so my edits make this process evident. Side by sides seem to present this activity with clarity. Yet I'm uncertain exactly how these edits might position themselves in real life. Printed as a stack, a mound, a long stream, nailed to fill an entire wall, unbound within a cover, will they be A4, will they be to be read, or just to be viewed? Importantly, the texts are a found material, and my treatment of them is akin to my treatment of found objects, or things. Sculptural. The original typeset remains, but is spliced, cut, blocked out, the appearance is shifted. The text can still be read, but not as they were originally intended to be read. The original purpose and function is removed, and thus they become lumpen. I guess, 
Fundamentally, my practice is attentive to found objects, found things, found texts concurrently, and how I might expose the lump-like substances that they each hold within themselves.